There is no beginning or end of the world, no more than a ball has edges. Years ago, the last space vessels in the never-ending story unfurl from the zenith to generate new planets and new suns. The universal dynamo static field is a cyclic sphere, comprised primarily of trajectories of space vessels. Several tens of thousands of these vessels, hurled in a catapult-like circular motion, form a gigantic bubble. Our eternal circular fall into our own void perpetually renews the spheres which bear, enlighten and compound us. As toxic emissions on the continents progress, the most powerful probes of the Industrial Revolutions, launched on an ever more distant spatial quest, will turn towards the great extragalactic void. A million spaceships, which have evacuated the galaxy to late, sink in the abyss which envelops it like a cocoon, the diminuating rotation of the galaxy not being sufficient to sustain their drive to the exterior. A million vessels drawn into the hyperspatial bubble are constantly modifying their trajectory to materialize a grey globe where the galaxy will become the core. A million satellite units revolve around the brown sphere neutron star of the collapsed galaxy. After following the itinerary to the center of the galaxy, a few space vessels are held fast, tumbling at 360 degrees in the eye of the cyclone of collapsed stellar matter. The weightless crews inside their composite ultra-hard hulls fall into lethargy. Bombarded with bundles of energy, several hundred bodies disintegrate into sentient molecules. There is no real death. The incursive probes diffuse the organic substance of their occupants. We are at the heart of the brown sphere. The ultimate descendant cosmonauts are nothing more than a mixture of liquefied bodies forming an omega and alpha ball haunted by billions of blood tie ascendants. After being charged from the exterior, the substance starts to irradiate the brown sphere. The Godhead processor of the new constellation. Every element of extinct humanity accomplishes his transhumance within the blood of the crews by the blending of a million of generations which mark the history of a constellation. The heavy globe rotates in the hyperspatial nothingness, white hot from 400,000 kilometers to 500,000 a second, and demultiplies into solar, then planetary spheres. The massive rotating globe immersed in its potential, the absolute absence of resistance, accelerates further, generating a pulverization of the minute atomic spheres which are injected into the solar and planetary magnetic bubbles. The heavy globe undergo a final acceleration, stabilized in a period of almost nothing paroxymic rotation for several hours. The globe turns orange, no longer emitting more than a cloud of fractional blue subatomic sphere. Held back by the galactic bar pressure, the vessels constituting the surface of the globe slow down, fall out of orbit and crash against the spiny black crown of the lion's constellation. A few remain near the galactical center close to the neutron star. Far away exploratory missions sometimes see them glittering. The organic disincarnation into the alpha and omega sphere passes the bridge of supreme vibration, virtually transferred to the exterior, duplicated outside of the orange globe, whirled from 690,000 to 700,000 kilometers a second in infinitesimal garlands. The cloud of blue spheres each processed by internal coiled sentient substance moves away from the suns, submerges the gravitating globes, covers the surface of the waters of the volcanic dawn. Piloted by their internal garlands, 
the myriads of subatomic blue spheres collect and cluster in gigantic bunches on an infinitesimal scale, which arrange themselves in spiral aggregates, reconstituting the very long heliocoid desoxyribonucleic molecule. We are in the cluster of grey suns animated by humanity given up to the schizoid spiral of violence during the era of the space vessel's concentric reduction. Tens of thousands of deferred triangular space vessels hurled in a circular motion three times the speed of light fly over the new galaxy and all associated history. Great armadas cruise alongside the space bases, a prelude to the large-scale manoeuvres of the stellar attack battalions. The tens of thousands of deferred triangular space vessels hurled in a circular motion lose velocity, initiating the long return towards the hypocenter. This process compresses the galaxy. The galaxy is crushed against its core, the brown sphere. Cracked, the brown sphere bursts like a melon, frees the biosensitive sphere of the cosmonauts who are not defunct. The primeval substance of a new cycle evaporates. The arrival of the round mega surface from all parts of space provokes a global bubbling at the heart of the primeval substance. Spontaneous apparition of minute round recondensations are emitted with an identical rotation cycle which encloses the new garlands. First, the emanation of infinitesimal blue spheres then the birth of clearly larger atomic spheres. Finally, the birth of magnetic bubbles of planetary solar kind. After compressing the black galaxy into protomatter, the megasphere, with a progressively longer rotation time, generates larger and larger globes. They capture the cloud of atomic dust and condense into new planets and new suns. Friction at the hypocenter of the decreasing dynamo sphere lights the larger spheres. These are the new suns. The wheeling movement of the space vessels in the last phase of deceleration at the speed of light tears away the protomaterial envelope, the galactic hymen. The circular expulsion of the placentary protomatter is at the origin of the most grandiose mirage of the modern era, the cosmopanoramic effect. Detached from the round surface of high revolution, the spacecrafts of the galactic dawn slow down to far below the speed of light, arrive among the sun planets which they have rounded, replotted in their wake. Concentric deceleration leaves a vacuum decontaminated of all meteors and crystal dust around the new galaxy. The DNA helix is perfectly visible under the high resolution microscope. Seen close up, Magnified more than 1.3 million times, it is distinguished in the form of yellow furrows finely twisted in the depth of the cells. Created by high energy in hyperspace, the magmas proliferate on the flanks of the volcanoes. They differentiate by range of vibrations into distinctly human, animal and plant stumps.